In this topic, we'll do some very basic email functions. Basic email functions means we're going to look at the message form, we'll look at the tabs available, we'll look at some of our response options, we have inline replies, print operations, and what happens when you delete a message. When you're in a message form, this means we've clicked on the button for a new message, this has popped up, just to point out it has its own backstage menu, it has its own ribbon that is specific to a new message. So it's not going to look like the same ribbon and toolbars that you had back in the rest of Outlook. In the To field, I can either click on the button where we've got three dots and I can browse, or I can simply click here and just type the email address if I know it. Same thing goes for CC. Do notice that we do not have any BCC natively on this screen, but always have faith that everything is only a click or two away. If I click on two and it brings me to a button, at the bottom of the screen I'll see two CC and BCC, so I can click on someone's name and then click on the button that says put it here, or you'll see that if you navigate through these ribbons, you'll have a chance to put that on the screen. Two carbon copy, blind carbon copy, the subject, the button to send it, and whatever it is you want to type to this person. Now, what I will tell you is you do want to make sure that all of your email messages have a subject because a lot of the spam filters that we install, if it doesn't have a subject, at least I know in my organization, it doesn't even make it through. I filter it right out and assume it's spam. So always make sure you have a clear subject in there and then use this to type in the rest of the message. When you're in a message and we have a message form in front of us, in our tabs, we have general message just for checking names and attaching items. Attach item, here are some of the more common, but we do have this insert tab which allows us to insert everything from smart art to a chart to a file or a signature. Um, we do have attach item. Attach item is an Outlook item, so maybe I'm going to attach a contact record that I have in the people workspace. We have options, so we can set options for this email, like give me a delivery receipt. Here's all of our formatting tools, and of course we have spell check and everything else under our review tab. If we've opened a message that was sent to us, then our response options are to reply to that person, to reply to every single person who got that email, so make sure you know whether or not you're the only person it was sent to, or if you hit reply to all and it goes to 49 others. We can forward this message to someone who didn't get it the first time around, meaning they weren't on the original distribution list, but we can also respond by scheduling a meeting, or you'll see there's all sorts of other items in there depending on how Outlook and your Exchange organization is set up. In this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and create and send an email. Now, based on that, I'm on the Home tab, I'm in the context of Mail, and all I have to simply do is click on New Email. So, in our new email, you will see that here, I've got an automatic signature that I've put in there, and we can simply do one of two things. On the To button, I can start typing and I can put the email address in that way, or if I know I have a contact, I can click on two, and I can go ahead and double click because they're already in my contact list so that I don't have to actually type it in. So we can then put in a subject, and I'm going to hit tab to move down here. This is the body of the message where you type in the actual message. So you'll see here I've typed in a message, it's landed right above my automatic signature, and all I have to do 
is hit send. Now, I do want to go ahead and remind you that this is not going to be a typing class. So the good news is anything that you see me send back and forth, this is about as long as it gets. So I'd rather you focus on the tools than the typing itself. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit send. Domestic goes out and we're good. Now understand I also do use a lot of fake email addresses in the point of demonstration and uh, sometimes they're open and sometimes they're closed. If we ever get back the non-deliverable report, I'll take time to show it to you because it is important to know what those are. We have inline replies. So I had mentioned there are two new favorite features. One of them is to be able to peek at the calendar or the people. And then the other one is inline replies. I can't tell you how many times I start a message and then I go to something else and I'm determined at the end of the day that I sent that message only to find out that the person never got it. So what happens when you reply is I can hit reply and right here the message drops down and allows me to start typing my response right there in line. It doesn't pop out as a window. When I click away from it, let's say I now go down to this email, I now see in orange the word draft so I know I was in the middle of composing a response to that. So I think that's fantastic. In fact, I'd give that as my favorite new feature. Now, if I don't have the room I need, I can always click on pop out, which means this particular message is going to pop out into its own window so that I can maximize it. And if you look really carefully, you might be able to see a little bit of orange underneath that arrow, which is where the orange word draft is. In this demonstration, we're going to get a chance to read some emails and to actually respond to them. So based on that, what I'm going to do is I'm clicking on the inbox. And as I go right through the inbox, you will see that Oscar Harris has sent me a courseware request. So based on that, I'm going to hit reply. And under reply, I'm going to go ahead and type them a message. Now what I would like you to notice is when I hit reply, down here at the very bottom, I can actually reply in place. So I've got automatically to Oscar, I've got CC, I've got the subject. The problem that I have sometimes with this is that I don't have enough room to adequately describe everything. So you can move this up if you want to give yourself a little bit more room. And if that's not enough, then you can simply click on pop out and notice it comes up to a full screen. So it's whatever you want. So I'm going to reply to Oscar just by hitting reply. Again, I could have done it in the bottom half of the screen or I could hit pop out and I could bring it up to this full screen to reply, which I typically like to do and that's just more because it's easier on my eyes. But for now, we're going to go ahead and hit send. Now, what if we wanted to actually forward this message to someone? So Oscar's sending me a courseware request, but I think Zoe might want to see a copy of this. So notice that we're going to hit forward. And again, it's going to be right down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and send this to Zoe. And I'm going to go ahead and hit send. Now, there is a keyboard shortcut to send. In fact, I do it all the time because it's such a habit of mine. It's control enter. Now, if that's the first time that you've ever used control enter, this is always going to appear for Outlook. You used it. Do you want to continue using this as your shortcut message? And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And you'll see that control enter also sends that out. Now, the big difference between reply and forward is reply if I'm replying to this message, replies back specifically to Oscar, and a forward actually forwards this message to someone who hadn't received it yet. So I forwarded a copy out to Zoe. So we have a lot of print options. And when I say a lot of print options, it really depends on the content of the email. You might have a one-liner. Or this morning, I actually printed out a recipe that my mother sent me. 
and it was a short and sweet, you got to try this, you'll love it. It was one page. I used the default of memo style. It's now sitting on my kitchen counter for something to try this weekend. So it could be that simple. But if you have a very long email with a lot of formatting, if you need to um, print it to a file, you can do so. Maybe it has a whole bunch of attachments and you want to print the attachments. So just understand if you've got an email in front of you, you can print it any way you want. And again, with the attached files, you don't have to double click on each one to open it and print them separately. You just tell it to print them as well. In this demonstration, we'll show you some of the print options for an actual message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click to open up one of Oscar's messages. And let's say this is something that I wanted to go ahead and print. All we need to do is to go to the file menu and you'll see down here we have print. Now under print we have of course the giant print button. We have the print preview of what this is going to look like. We also have some print options. Our option here is to print it memo style which is what you see. But we can also go ahead into page setup, change some margins. We can even define styles. So memo style is just one that happens to be defined. You can actually create your own if you do enough printing of the email messages. And of course notice you have your print range, all pages, or a specific page. And if there are attached files, whether or not you want to go ahead and print those attached files. We'll do a little bit more with attachments later. Otherwise, what we do is we go ahead and simply click on print, and it'll send it to the printer itself. So now we're going to talk a little bit about deleted items. When you delete an email, it doesn't go away permanently. I always use the kitchen trash analogy. So I'm cooking on a Saturday, I throw something in the trash right there in the kitchen. You know what? It's not gone yet. It's still on trash day, has to be packaged up and put on the curb. And guess what? It still gets taken away from there. So deleted items works the same way. When you delete it, it puts it in the trash. Once it's in the trash, it will sit there until you literally put it out on that curb for the trash guys to take away what we consider permanently away from our doorstep. So in order to do that, all you have to do is right click on deleted items and choose empty. But also if you click on deleted items, you'll have the buttons if you navigate the toolbars to delete it as well. Now in deleted items, if you decide to pick through the trash, I can right click and I can undelete it. I can drag things to the folder that they were supposed to be in. So all those options are available. What I will also tell you is in the deleted items, depending on where you get your email from. This is the big piece here. If you're in-house in a corporate environment, you have an exchange server, meaning somehow email comes into your site, um, they may have a policy that allows you to undelete even after you've deleted it out of the deleted items. That's something you have to work out with your system administrator. That's like chasing the trash guy down the street and saying, no, 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 I didn't mean it but sometimes it's possible. Again, it depends on where you pull your email from. In this demonstration, we'll show you how to delete an email. An email can be deleted by simply opening it up and pressing the delete button. Notice that the little flag pops down and it says delete control D. So if you're a keyboard shortcut person, control D will do the same thing. But if you don't have it open, and let's say here we have our Google Plus team, I don't even want to open that to delete it. Notice I can just simply click once and click on delete. Now once you delete a message, it doesn't always go completely away. So what happens is when you delete a message, it does move over to the deleted items folder. So when I go over to the deleted items folder, you're going to see right here, we have something called Gmail. We're going to move down here to trash. And there within the trash, you'll see everything that's actually been deleted. Now, I do want to talk about this a little bit. So what we have for this particular Outlook configuration is a Gmail account. It's an IMAP account. Now, that means we're going to pull down our email and we're working with Gmail directly. If you happen to have an Exchange server, um, which really means that your email is more corporate email, 
it's being seen and viewed and worked with in-house, then it would be a whole different type of email account and a whole different type of pulling it down. The interface to Outlook will look exactly the same in terms of how to read a message, how to reply to a message, but this part does look a little bit different because Exchange or the local corporate email actually has something called deleted items and the reason for deleted items is we have corporate retention policies where you can delete it and then you can actually pick it out of the trash meaning within 14 days you can undelete it so again some types of email accounts will say trash some types of accounts that say deleted items it depends on where you're pulling your email from but here if I was to right click I can empty the folder Emptying the trash will permanently delete everything. We go ahead and click yes, and it all goes completely away. I always compare that to you put it out on the curb for trash day, but if the trash people don't come, it's still in the trash can on the curb. It's not until they take it away and empty your trash that it's actually permanently gone.